It's just too much to you know, explain, I think. It's a life for some yeah. people. It's a vocation, it's, it's everything, basically. It is a life. Once you start doing it, if you're damn fit that much, I've been writing since like 1983 now. I'm 20, well, I'll be 24 in August. So like, you know, I don't years, intend man. to give up now. Giving up now would just seem like, you know, there's no, there's, there's no giving up now. It's me, graffiti is me, so I will paint. No matter if I like paint once, once a month or I go into one and I like, go on the subway every night for a week and just totally fuck up stations and fuck up inside the trains and whatever. <laughs> it don't matter, I'll just, I'll still come out doing graph no matter what. If anything happens to me, I know that I'll still come out doing graph. That's all I know, it's the only like, substantial thing in my life that I can see is gonna be there all the time with me, you know. It's that kind of vibe. Why did you say that? Why did you say that? Because I feel that it's time that we should react. Yeah, it's a question. What is that? Where do we go from? It just keeps me from going under. Me personally, it stops me from going under. It keeps my head in place, you know what I mean? Any ideas I've got go into my art, you know, any thoughts I've got go into it, you know. If I've got thoughts on what goes on the world, they will go into it. It's just where I speak it, where I'm expressing. Expressing yourself. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I suppose the whole thing of it all is not to get caught, to keep that, because the more trouble you're going to get into, obviously, you're going to get more like, you know, shit, I've got caught again or whatever, you know. I got caught for quite a few times when I was younger, but I got, like, you know, cautions and that, like, escaped, I suppose. But, like, now I've come to this stage and I've been raided a few times in yards, like, police have been in my house, but they've never either brought me to court, but they've never been able to do me with anything. So. Case of criminal damage, which involved compensation or the value of the damage was a large amount of money, would be seen as being more serious than just one push of a spray can on a wall. Um, but generally, I think that spray painting, graffiti artist, tagging, whatever you want to call it, would be seen as on the border between a financial penalty, the least serious, and the medium category of seriousness. And I think uh, spray painting, tagging, is one of those offences where the court would be thinking almost first of all about compensating the victim, probably almost before punishing the offender. The court doesn't have the power to direct that the offender clears up the mess of their offence. We do have the power to make, uh, comp uh, to make uh, community service orders, and it may be that as part of that community service they would be required to clean up graffiti. But that would be a coincidence. It becomes more serious, I think, if a young person is committing the offence five, six, seven times. Then it seems to me you would have to be looking for some intervention by a social work agency. There's something of a dilemma about how uh, seriously the, that particular offence should be treated because um, the, the, the highest profile offences were, were done on um, trains and tubes and um, they were high profile socially because people either liked them or they didn't like them. The people who didn't like them found them very offensive and complained a lot. But also the, uh, the rail companies were um, concerned about the expense of, uh, of cleaning. But that was, um, so the social outrage that that raised was actually um, combated by how dangerous it was for the young people who are actually doing it because they chose quite dangerous places to, to, to go and tag. A number of young people were actually killed um, either by being hit by trains or falling off trains in the process of, uh, of, of tagging. Um, and that similarly received uh, quite a lot of press attention at the time. And that there was, in the eyes of the court, there was concern that, that if young people were going to do that, they needed to do it safely, as much as the interest in, in, in having an appropriate and just uh, punishment for the offence, which you know, clearly was one of criminal damage, which uh, is 
legally a, a relatively minor offence. Tube trains are the number one target for the graffiti gangs. Here they fulfill two of the main aims, maximum recognition and the respect that comes from hitting the most dangerous targets. But what starts as play can quickly become an obsession. Daniel was just one young lad whose life was overtaken, as his mother recalls. Even his school writing started to look like graffiti. If you opened a drawer in his bedroom, there, were graf there was graffiti along the bottom of the drawer. Any piece of paper that was left out had this graffiti on it. Stealing paint may not be a serious crime, but the consequences of graffiti writing were tragic for Daniel. After three or four years of climbing walls and trains, he became hooked on danger. Eventually, he climbed out of a moving tube train and got onto the roof and was knocked down by an overhead bridge. At the moment, Daniel's mother is campaigning for treatment centres to help graffiti addicts. By persuading youngsters that they have a problem, perhaps some could be stopped before it's too late. Reaction of Londoners to tagging is very negative. We picked out different press cuttings to, to show really how the, how the media react to, to graffiti in general. So you tend to get the sort of headline which says, um, in the mind of a graffiti lout, or um, it tends to be a lot about uh, how much, if the media focus on how much um, is being spent on cleaning trains and what have you, which I have to say is rather like it's about two two million a year or something. Uh, we at London Union of Youth Clubs try to provide as many opportunities as we can for graffiti artists to show their work and to give them a platform to display it. Be because of what's been happening up until now, because we're because more and more people seem to be wanting to have graffiti art workshops and to use graffiti as a way of um, working around particular youth work issues. Um, I get asked quite often to find graffiti artists to go and do workshops. So that is really how we're progressing at the moment, using graffiti in education and, and youth work. I'm getting don't, don't get scared. It's only spray can. I know. I know. You can go like that as well. Okay. Do some on the top of the tea. Mhm. Mm no, don't ruin the tea. <laughs> Not your tea at all. Oh, I won't. Oh. There, Tay. Take them. Workshops to me are pretty important because. It kind of like keeps, keeps me on a street level in one sense because it keeps me in touch with the people and environment which I grew up in and which I came out of as an aerosol artist. Because like basically what it's doing for me is giving, is help, it's put it this way, I'm giving or at least trying to give young people the chance which I didn't have. In other words, to have someone coax them with aerosol cans and stuff like that. And not just say don't write on trains because that's bad and blah blah because I'm not coming from that angle. Because I'm not going to condemn writing on trains, even if I start doing stuff in major galleries, I'm never going to condemn train writing or bombing because that's how I start. So I'd be a hypocrite to even try. So basically I just like try and coach them in the positive side of the art form in the sense that it ain't just about tagging your name and stuff, but I kind of like help them to construct murals and come up with ideas of how they can use their solar art in the community as well. Plus also a lot of them they haven't used aerosols before and the fact that they can get into something and create something or be a part of something which is like long lasting which the whole community can see it gives them a sense of pride and achievement which is good <laughs> 